Hey Magic Community on YouTube, T1 Glistenerolf here. I put a poll up on Twitter a few days ago, and then another one, asking what kinds of decks I should play. First one gave a few options, second one gave an option I forgot, uh, but then it turned out that the FNM at Home event this time around was a historic all-access, so you know what? Everybody gets, <laughs> gets to be a winner. I am showing off a bunch of decks. It, I, it's at least eight. It's quite a few. Uh, so FNM historic all-access. All, what all-access means is that for the purpose of this event, for the duration of this event, you have any number of cards available to you. you it's as if you have every card on here, including every edition of every card, which come, doesn't matter, but comes into play a couple times so I can show off, I guess. Uh, so for example, if you have no more mythic wild cards or rare wild cards, doesn't matter, build the deck however you want. And so all of those decks that I was having some trouble with, um, yeah, that <laughs> trouble building, trouble showing off, I get to do that here. I have 11 decks. Uh, in no particular order, we'll say the order that I made, uh, although these two are kind of close enough, I may just do one of them. Okay, going into it, I'll do a deck tag for every video, but and I will play a game for each, but because there are so many, I'm probably only going to get one in, one actual game. Uh, sorry about that. So the first one that I built was Death and Taxes. Uh, this is very simply, it, it's exactly what you think it is. So it has two one-drops, Giant Killer, which is also a three-drop, and Selfless Savior to help give us some wrath insurance. And this is our only targeted removal in the deck. Everything else is a hate bear. We have Containment Priest, so non-token creatures that would enter the battlefield if they weren't cast. Exile him instead. Droneth Magistrate, which keeps spells from being cast anywhere other than the hand, so no escaping. Hushbringer, which makes ETBs not work, or dying abilities not work. Thalia, which makes non-creatures cost more. Archon of Emeria, which plays Rule of Law. It's a Rule of Law card. Uh, but it also makes non-basic lands my opponent's control enter the battlefield tab. So the first ability is symmetrical, the second is not. Uh, Aven Mindsensor, well I guess technically it's second and third, but you know. Aven Mind Sensor, which makes it where when they search the library they only get to search the top four. It's a land destruction spell, what can I say? Banalis Marshall, because all of our creatures are pretty tiny, and so this gives plus one plus one to the rest of them. Skyclave Apparition, because we have a little bit more removal, I suppose. Uh, and then we only have 20 lands, two Castle Ardenvale, ten planes, look at that John Avon, that gorgeous full art. Four Secluded Step, and four Shevet Dune. So these come in tapped, these come in tapped on turn one, but otherwise should be fine. Cycling is important because later on, we don't want to get flooded. The top of our curve is three here, after all. And then Chef at Dunes because it buffs our team. Uh, so let's give this one a, a shot. And there are also some other options that you could consider, but let's give it a go. Alright, here goes nothing. Here goes nothing. Uh, now, to be fair, these decks will range anywhere from I think pretty good to I think pretty jank. <laughs> pretty janky. Uh, just because it's shown here doesn't mean I think it's going to win you the arena open or anything like that. It just means I'm trying to brew something to have fun, I suppose. Alright, so we will keep this, and we'll start off with probably... Alright, so definitely that. Let's have this come in tapped. Give my opponent the hello. Also, I have a pack to open, which we can do later on. If you'll stick around to the end, we'll, we'll open that then, I suppose. Alright, so I don't know what's about to happen here, but the first thing to do is to play out a Thalia and first strike and a hate bear effect. Hopefully this should slow them down a decent bit. Depending on what they have next, we'll either hold up Containment Priest or Draenith Magistrate. Ah, okay, so a two mana fatal push. That's fine. I mean, it's not ideal, but it's okay. Ooh, you know what we missed? Alright, so let's hold up Contain... Wait, 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 wait. This actually can deal with the 1-3. Might not be ideal, though. Alright. It does look like a deck that might be able to do some graveyard shenanigans, and this doesn't count as casting, unfortunately. So, it may not end up working out for us. That's also not casting. Alas. Alas. Okay, well then, um... We still hit 20 lands in the deck. Uh... Hmm... We can flash in a Containment Priest. We can also play two Magistrates 
and only one of them will die here. But that's that's not giving me a lot of these effects that I would like to have. Uh, let's um, let's wait, shall we? What's the this is one and right and tap. We can flash in containment priest later on. Might work out. They'll hit us for three, put us to fifteen. We'll make it work. We're both kind of stuck on lands. First one to get out might have a chance. Maybe. I'd like to get this Aven Mind Sensor working. Although it might be mono black, if they happen to run Fable Passage or a Tutor, Grim Tutor, then we can get him. We can get him. Ah, oh, they found one. Okay, what you got? Just the one? We'll let it through. No blocks. Ooh. Uh, let's get this out now. Alright. Unfortunately, that means they can take the best card based on what they're doing. Uh, Hushbringer and Magistrate are the only ones that I can cast here. I guess in Giant Killer, too. You know, if I need to, in a pinch, I can cast Giant Killer. Yep, okay. Makes, makes sense. Oh, yeah, 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 makes sense. Well, Draneth Magistrate isn't doing anything about the cast shenanigans. Okay, let's uh, have this up again, I suppose. I may actually give up the Containment Priest. She doesn't look like she's doing as much this game. We'll hold back a bit. Ironically, if it gets that knight too big, and I find another land, two lands now, Giant Killer will come in handy. Uh, you may not want to attack with that one. Okay. Uh, n no blocks. Pump it, pump it, pump it up. Yes, I agree. I agree. Gutter bombs. Okay. Um, can we find a land, please? That would be awfully nice. Uh, yeah, let's play that out. Alright, pass. Just attacking with the one. They can get it up to a 5-6. And now we need a bunch to block with in order to get there. Oi, oi, oi. That's not great. I have to give up basically my whole field to deal with just one Knight of the Ebon Legion. If I don't, then I can use mana in future turns. Make it all... Uh... Okay, how do we want to do this? They can only pump it once. Man, we have to give up so much to make this work. This looks like a losing game, unfortunately. Death and Taxes is not hating because of what they have in their deck. It's not hating on them very much. Alright, what do you have? I could have also blocked with Selfless Savior, and I should have. Alright, what do you have? What's that last card? So they can pump it once to a 5-6, Death Touch. If that's a Fatal Push, if that's a Fatal Push, it would need to be Fatal Push, because in order to go pump and kill it, they would need one, one mana. Oh, I see what they're doing. They're just organizing it. Let's, uh, save Thalia. Ah, okay. Makes sense. Ding. Oh boy. And we're in trouble. We're still in trouble. Of course we are. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, well we need another... We need land, and another land, and a uh, giant killer. Right on time, bud. Right on time. 
Oh boy, are we in trouble or what? All right. Yeah, we need <laughs> we need quite a bit here to make this work. That obliterator is sick, though. I dig it. You'll see obliterator in one of my decks coming up. One, two, three. Uh, this can come straight to the battlefield again. This one comes to the hand. Zahanda. Alright. Oh, Skyclave Apparition would also get us there. Skyclave Apparition would help quite a bit. Alright. So they can get this back. They can get their Scrounger back. Scrap Heap Scrounger? Uh-oh. I see them looking over the card. Uh, they haven't cast a spell yet, so they... And these are abilities anyway, so they can cast stuff. Oh boy. Two minus one minus one counters, yep. Interesting. I don't know that that's what I would have picked, but I guess it works. Okay. Whale. Well, we're dead. <laughs> but I'll play it out. I'll play it out at least. I might as well. Ooh, wait a minute. That buff is actually potentially. No, it's gonna hurt. No, no. I actually don't want the buff here. No! If it had been a 2 3 instead, we'd have one permanent left. No! Why? Why? Okay. Uh. How do we make this work? I'll, I'll still take two if I do that. Uh... Alright. Maybe we don't want the buff here anymore. We're not winning if we don't have some, some damage going on, though. I did consider Heliod for the deck, but that wouldn't do us a whole lot of good right now. Alright, buddy. I'm sorry. Rip and pepperoni. Ow. Alright, sack three permanents. One, two, three. Alright. I'm gonna say good game. <laughs> you jerk. I mean, uh... <laughs> no, they're doing what their deck's supposed to do. Not really anything I can do from here, unfortunately. Uh, so, hate bears. You don't want to come across a creature heavy decks like this. That's, your hate tends not to be very effective against them, unfortunately. So, I'll concede. Save them some time. It happens. It happens. We also didn't draw Skyclave Apparition. Um, Containment Priest wasn't effective against the particular shenanigans they were doing at the moment that it was out. It could work to keep Scrounger, to exile Scrounger, or the the zombie, but at that moment, that wasn't that wasn't enough. So we'll switch that out. The second deck that I made was Transmogrified Tokens. Let me open this up really quickly. So Transmogrified Tokens is a mono red tokens deck, and it wins in a couple different ways. One of them is Cavalcade of Calamity. All of the tokens have one power, and so Satyr's Cunning makes a token, a 1-1 one -one that can't block. Uh, shock for removal. Dragon Fodder makes two one one, so it's the servo exhibition, I guess, of this deck. Uh, Forbidden Friendship makes a red and a white token, one of which has haste. Cool. Chandra can create two, or she can cast something like a Shock uh, or Dragon Fodder, Forbidden Friendship, right back, thankfully. Uh, and she can also make Tybalt bigger, so that Tybalt can keep making more 1-1s, one and these, when they die, actually deal 1 damage to any target. That means that we have 1, 2, 3, 4, so 4, 8, 12, 16, 18 cards that create tokens for us. Uh, we could also include the one that makes a dwarf, if you have enough uh, mountains, and I probably should include that as well, to be honest. Uh, so. What do we do with all of this? What shenanigans do we have planned for all this? You know what, Let, let's, let's put that in while we're at it. While I'm thinking about it. Uh, yep, here we go. So, take one card out. 
take a mountain, I guess, even though it thrives on having enough mountains. Uh, it's a mountain itself. That would give me 12 total. That's probably not enough, but occasionally it can make a 1-1, one, one, and it does come in tapped on turn 1, which matters for 2 cards. Well, 8 cards. So, sure, I guess. Could also take out, take out Ramanop Ruins, but that comes in untapped. Okay, so, uh, the other strategy in the deck is to, the other game plan, is to use Transmogrify or Luka on one of your tokens. And the, Transmogrify is exile target creature, that creature's controller reveal card, reveals cards from the top of their library until they reveal a creature card. Uh, and they put it on the battlefield, shovel the rest. Cool. Luka, the pl minus two is what we care about here. Exile target creature you control, then reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal a creature card with higher converted mana cost. All of ours are zero. Put that card on the battlefield and the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. And it's a minus two with Lucas starting at five, so you can do it twice if for some reason you need to. So there aren't a lot of instant win buttons like there are in other formats. If you play something like Show and Tell, Sneak Attack, Oath of Druids, Tinker, the cards like that in Legacy or Vintage, uh, you're probably getting a card that'll either win you the game on that turn, or that'll win you the game on the very next turn, right? Well, there are plenty of very next turn cards, uh, but as for winning the game on that turn, I think that Crater Hoof, for a deck like mine, is probably the best, and that's why it's so heavy on the tokens. Now, it doesn't have anything to improve the power of my creatures, because it is a cavalcade deck, and unfortunately that does mean you can come across an inability to get past a wall of creatures. Uh, shock being your only removal is a bit of a concern, except that we have this backup plan, and with eight instances of them, it's decently likely that given enough time we'll get there. And Crater Hoof just instantly wins you the game if you have but a handful of tokens. So that's, that's what this deck is going for. I don't know that I necessarily recommend uh, playing it at like as a serious event, or as a serious deck, but uh, let's go for it. Let's try out tokens. See where we go. See if we can get it to work <laughs> for one game. Uh, will it be too slow? Yes. <laughs> yes. The combo is slow. There aren't any, say, rituals or anything like that that we can use. Uh, we don't have the legendary creatures to make uh, Mox Amber work. We have Planeswalkers. Alright, so with something like this, we will keep and just try to get there. We don't happen to have Transmogrify or Luka, but even if we did, we don't have... Hey, there we go. Alright, so let's play Satyr's Cunning first, and we'll decide what we want to do with this Forbidden Cave in a bit. We can cycle it, or we can use it going forward. Uh, what are they going to play? A curse. What is this? Enters the battlefield under Enchanted Player's Control. Oh, no! We make tokens. That's really bad for us. That's really bad, isn't it? Oh boy. Well then, uh, I guess Forbidden Friendship? Let's take two. Yeah, that's a problem. Ow, ow. <laughs> Why am I saying ow for you? Oh, by the way, hello. By the way, by the by. That's, uh, that's pretty good against us. So, depending on what they do here... Uh, woo! Give him the nice for that. That was pretty cool. Okay, so there's there's Transmogrify. Uh, let it come in tapped, and then we'll make a couple. Um, we actually need to go a little bit longer to make lethal with, uh, oh no, with Transmogrify, with a Behemoth. And we only have one more Behemoth in the deck, so we really need to. All right, Tybalt, do your thing. We're gonna take one here. Let it resolve, get hit for a bit more. I don't know what my opponent's on, but I'm going to try to just auto-win the game next turn. Maybe. Maybe. We'll see. No promises, folks. Oh, okay. Please play a creature I can shock. Please? I would appreciate that. No! No, you stop that! <laughs> you stop that! Okay. Uh, with just one mana left... Well, we can't fire this off next turn anyway, so I guess we'll shoot them. Does it make a difference? No. Alright. 
Activate, make another creature. That actually will pump our behemoth here. So even though we're uh, we're taking some, we're giving them life for it, it ends up working out. So sacrifice, yes. Sacrifice the one that cannot attack Rice. Exile the one that cannot uh, attack here anyway. Boom! Please work. Please don't have something for one mana that ruins my day. Hey, we got there. We got there. That was that was a little scary. This is a weird card, and I'm playing a deck where uh, my creatures do one point of damage every combat, notwithstanding Cavalcade. So uh, that could have gone poorly, but thankfully we got there. Thankfully we weren't just on tokens. Hey, Containment Priest! I actually got one! <laughs> okay, so we're, we have one win. The next deck that I put together was Bant Company, and these were the three that I included in my first Twitter poll. Death and Taxes, Transmogrify, though it was given as Transmogrify instead of tokens, and Bant Company. Uh, really quickly, let's show this one off. Uh, by the way, if if you haven't checked it out, there should be a in the description like a table of contents for all the different decks, like just showing you a timestamp for when I deck tech the next one. Uh, so this one should kind of write itself. You probably know where this is going. So we start off with turn one ramp, Gilded Goose, Land of Our Elves, and we have four collected companies. So a lot of the rest of the deck is going to be trying to maximize the value that we get off of that. So a lot of these will be CMC3. Banalish Marshall, which is actually decently hard to cast, so we, we want to see it off Coco if possible. Skyclave Apparition, Brazen Borrower, Deputy of Detention, Knight of Autumn. Uh, all four of these are some sort of removal, some sort of interaction. So we're a creature deck, but we also get to play a little bit of a control ish role, a mid-range, I suppose. control ish ish uh, Or two Aven Mind Sensor, which could be four. Uh, but the last four slots are two of Mind Sensor as a hate piece. We can use Coco at instant speed, so if they try to do like a fetch, we might be able to get them as well uh, with Aven Mind Sensor. And then there's also Thieving Skydiver, because artifacts are kind of everywhere. At worst, it's a 2 1 that happens to fly, so at least it has evasion. At best, if it gets in our hand, we can kick it so that we can take, say, their Mind Stone, for instance. Now, because, you know, it's realistically going to be. 3, 4, 5 mana before you actually get to use it uh, for that extra little bit as well. Uh, it's only a 2 of. Could be more. In Merfolk, I run this as a 2 of right now, uh, just because I'm seeing so many mud decks. But uh, if, if we had better access to more mana, then yes, this would end up being a uh, 4 of instead. Or a, a 3 of and 1 even Mind Sensor, I suppose. Uh, there are other options you could go with, but... And then here's the land base. We have the Four Fable Passage, for Breeding Pool, and Botanical Sanctum. For Temple Garden, to Sun Petal Grove, for Hallowed Fountain, one Glacial Fortress, two Forest Island Plains, because of Fable Passage. You know, as you do. Uh, we could also put in Containment Priest, but because it's a collected company deck, Containment Priest was shut down our own company, unfortunately. So we have to be careful about that. Um... I have done something like that in Death and Taxes before, uh, where I <laughs> I had Containment Priest out and then tried to flash in a creature with Aether Vial. It did not work, unfortunately. You gotta be careful about that. Alright, so what's what's coming up next? And how scared should I be? Also, oh no, it's fine. Hmm. Eight, maybe too many ramp creatures. Uh, but I very much would like to go turn two big stuff, and this helps enable it. That is a perfect little land base. Look at that. Perfect little mana base. Uh, also, I should have moved it to the front, make my opponent think I might, just maybe, have a have only one land in hand. Okay. Huh. Huh. Well. Well. nothing for me to take just yet. Hiya! Poke. And hold up the Brazen Borrower. Can't get out the Banalish Marshal just yet. Yeah, it's Elves, not Gilded Goose, after all. Plus, Marshal is more of a late-game card anyway. Later game, I suppose. Alright, let's get rid of you. 
for now. We'll see you again soon, I'm sure. So it's spirits, then. I suppose that that works. Well, in that case, I guess I want to use Coco here for count in case of counter magic. Ooh. Sure. That, that could have gone better. I should have used up my opponent's turn, as it turned out. Um, maybe I was playing a little around counter magic a little too much. It's spirits. I know they should run counter spells. They often do, but maybe it wouldn't have come up there. Maybe. It's a flash creature deck. They can run counter spells more readily than a lot of these can. So I guess I was playing a little too scared. Uh, so now we can play the Banalish Marshal and attack with the team. I want to use Deputy of Detention later in case they have another Shacklegeist. I really would like to do it that way. Alright, and then play you all. Pump that up. Alright. Take out the Skydiver? No, no, okay. Huh. Make the field as wide as we can, I suppose. Yeah, and check out the way that this is worded. Two untapped spirits you control. Oh, yep, I knew it. It worked out. Oh my goodness, it really worked out. Oh my goodness. Oh wow. Uh, yeah. Yeah, this is gonna be fun. I don't know that I agree with that, but okay. Uh, well, they're tapped out, so let's get them. Get them. Alright, so they can tap Night of Autumn down. I wouldn't blame them. Yeah, yeah but that'll, that'll do it. We don't have lethal here just yet, but basically we do. Just pretty much. Oh wait, we don't have the double blue anyway. Yeah, we don't have double blue. I guess we'll just play this as a blocker. They don't... They shouldn't have artifacts. Yeah! Yeah, that happens. Now, it's not impossible that they have settled the wreckage, so I won't attack with everything next turn. Certainly not the deputy of detention. Ooh. Alright, what do you have? Ooh! Okay. I like that. It... Once again, they did it on... Yeah, they did it on their turn instead of mine. I don't know why they did it, though. I was worried about counter magic. Um... Maybe I shouldn't have been. This is, by the way, so spirits, I think, in Historic, I think their most common counter magic is Negate, because of things like Wrath of God, Settle the Wreckage, um, I don't know. Fumigate, Cleansing Nova, whatever the hell you fit, Languish, actually, realistically. Stuff like that. Extinction Event. <laughs> uh, so that, it makes sense that that would be the one that they play. Okay. For the next one that I built, it was, uh, this one, I had, this is, I made two Twitter polls because I left Combo Drakes out of the first one, uh, and here it is. This is a, there's a bunch of different ways you could do this, this is the version that I'm playing with. Uh, so, Combo Drakes, kind of, the combo is you play a creature, Sprite Dragon, Enigma Drake, or Crackling Drake, with something that scales with your instants and sorceries, and then you use a combination of Raking Claws giving Double Strike and Unleash Fury. You don't need to have both, but if you do, you can kill extremely early. For example, a Sprite Dragon that starts as a 2-2. Say you play it, opt, and it's a 2-2, so then comes around to your next turn. Raking Claws, it's a Double Strike 3-3. Unleash Fury, it's a Double Strike 8-4, because it's a 4-4 and it just got its power doubled. So 16 damage which can happen fairly early on. That's a turn four, 16 damage. And if the thing that you had that gave the counter to Sprite Dragon was a shock, congratulations, you just killed your opponent on turn four. Two plus two plus eight plus eight. <laughs> so that's the idea behind the deck. You don't need to have both. Raking Claws is better because you can cycle it. If you, and also Double Strike is a better ability generally. It's, it can be used on defense and it can get around Death Touch and all that kind of crazy stuff. Other than that, you have opts for consistency with the deck. Crash through to give Trample, uh, so that you don't just get chump blocked, and it draws a card. Uh, shock. Lofty Denial, which is a little slow. You have to actually get a flying creature out in order to make it work. And 
especially with Crackling Drake. Four plus two, that's a little hard to make work sometimes. I have died I, uh, in a game where I went Sprite Dragon, Enigma Drake, Crackling Drake, with Lofty Denial in hand the whole time, but I needed to get it a, a flying creature to stick in order to make it actually work as a full counterspell. But it's really great. It counters everything, and it is soft, but four mana being paid is... They should be dead by that point. Uh, aside from that, and to go along with Shock, there's Lightning Strike and Shredded Sails, which is a concession to how many artifact, how much mud there is in Historic. <coughs> also, because all of my creatures fly, I have to worry about flying blockers, and dealing four damage to a creature with flying can actually matter as a result. Worst case scenario, I can cycle it. So this is a weird card, but I think I can make a reasonable case for it. It still probably wouldn't be in the main board if it weren't a meta call, but you could put it in the sideboard if you, if you th thought that better. Uh, and then, we don't have that many lands, so four Sulphur Falls, four Steam Vents, four Spire Bluff Canal, four River Glide Pathway, and then three Mountain, three Islands, so 22 lands altogether. Eleven creatures. I, I think that the deck's okay. I think it's alright. Uh, so let's switch into that one. And... boop. There we go. Let's a play. That was quick. Hmm. Today's coffee is the Seattle's Best Henry's Blend because it has a cat on it and Evangeline likes cats. That's basically it. Give him the hello. Alright. My boy. This actually is a deck that maybe I could use in speedrun attempts. Uh, yes. We'll opt. A little awkward doing that with a sprite dragon in hand, but I think we can make it. Oh, then we have crashed through. Yeah, that'll be okay. If we need to, we can burn crash through a time or two just to make sure we have another land next turn. Oh, it's a Gideon deck. Hey, buddy. Emblem. Nope, nope, no, that makes way more sense, actually. Of course it does. Jay, you genius. Uh, well, we can still get the counters. Hey, we got somewhere. Hmm. Let's wait. Let's wait a little bit. We'll see for how long. Yep, that makes sense. We maybe have to worry about artifacts in this deck. I don't remember off the top of my head how many artifacts they happen to run, but I think it's not zero. So we may want to hold on to Shredded Sails after all. Um, five. Um, actually, I am going to burn it. This may not be right, but I'm going to burn it real quick. Aha! Oh no, it's too slow. Oh, what was that? I thought they had something on my upkeep. Alright. Live. Por favor. Glorious and yep, yep, yep. Okay. Ends the turn before I could get the Spire Bluff Canal down. I should have played it first. Okay. Well, at least we can kill Gideon now. Though I'm sure that they have another. I'm positive that they have another. Ah! Okay. Whale. Can we still kill it? Spire Bluff comes in tap, so I think that the answer is no. We, we can get two plus shock on it, so unless we find another land, Gideon gets to live. Gideon gets to... Yeah. Nope, no, no. That's that's it. I should have played that. I forgot that was a card to play around. Um... Still want to play out Sprite Dragon, though. And then I guess we could draw a card? With Crash Through?
Yeah, let's let's do crash through here. We might be able to get the opponent. Alright. Poke. It's not much, but if we need to, we can double shock to take it out. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yep, okay. Do they have another one? Teferi. Ooh. Ooh, that's, that's good. I like that the synergies that this can have with their deck. Alright, play the land first. Learn my lesson. Ooh, wait a minute. Drake first. Shout out to Drake. If you want to end the well, they can't end the turn. They don't have the mana for it. That's right. They don't have the mana for it. Um, we can't kill to fairy just yet. Not yet. And that should do it. What one mana answers could they have to that? Pact of Negation. Okay. I was not expecting that. I should have. I forget that that's a card, but we can thank Almanket Remastered for that. It was an invocation. Okay. Okay, well that happened then. Uh, don't pay it. <laughs> it still gives them the option. That's interesting. As, they sh as it should, but still. One ear down. What's up? We do have counter spells in this deck, if we could find them. It would be nice. Right, I'm waiting for Wraths to just destroy me. Ooh, okay. We're just going for blood now. Bang. Uh, okay, what for? What was that? What was that about? They have Wraths. Temporal Sundering. Oh my goodness. Okay, then. Huh. We have reached that stage of the game. That's not fun. That's not good. That's not good. This is a weird matchup. Can I please, please, please find a counterspell? No, you stop that. Oh, they're about to take extra turns. Oh, no, okay. So... We're gonna die here, but we're gonna keep playing. They're gonna, uh, have they done the draw discard with Teferi? No, they had not. I mean, yes, they had, excuse me, excuse me. Ow. Okay, then. Uh, even if, uh, if they have a, a Wrath of God, no matter what I play here, they can kill me. And I actually need... Yeah, so let's play Enigma Drake and then Sprite Dragon. Because uh, if they have any sort of removal for one of them, Teferi can get rid of the other. Absorb. Yep, okay, that's good. That's good game. Good game. Yeah, they got me. They got me. I'm just going to go out on a limb and say that they will phase it out, as they should. Okay, so that happened. So I have a, another deck that's similar to that. It's more all-in on the combo. Uh, it's more fragile, too. And it is Kiln Fiend combo. Let's take a look at this one. So the creatures in here are Kiln Fiend, Magmatic Channeler, and Sprite Dragon. Mostly Kiln Fiend, which you cast an instant sorcery, gets plus three, plus zero till end of turn. And Sprite Dragon, non-creature spell, it gets a plus one, plus one counter, and it flies and has haste. The idea is pretty similar. You want to play Unleashed Fury and Raking Claws and make them ridiculous, make them huge. Uh, Magmatic Channeler is sort of a backup win con. It's realistically a 4-4, but it also gives you some longevity. It lets you try to discard a card, ex useless cards, so you can find something to further your game plan. Aside from that, we draw with Opt and Crash Through. We remove with Shock. We also have Burning Profit. I forgot that I put you in, that's right. This one is a little bit smaller. You may notice it only gets plus one, plus seven, and it starts as a one three. So it, it doesn't die as easily as, say, Kiln Feigned. Uh, but it counts for non creatures, and you get to scry. So if we have Raking Claws and Leash Fury, it's a three two, or a, a three three, I should say, 
that gets its power doubled, so it's a 6-3 with, you know, double strike. It's not as explosive, but the scry is actually kind of nice. Although in this deck, the fact that it's non-creatures instead means it's not as... It, it doesn't get extra utility out of that. But for other kinds of decks, I can see that flexibility being needed. Uh, and yeah, that's that's basically... Oh, and Lightning Strike, of course. That's basically it. Mana base should look pretty similar, except it's heavier on red. And let's add that one in as well. Boop. Oh no. Yeah, can't hit enter. Okay. Let's try this out. This seems like it's a, a more fragile deck. I would consider this jankier than the previous one we did. A little bit. Just a little bit. Jim Opper. Jim Opper. Jim Mama. Okay. Uh, yes, we will take this. It's everything we need, if not everything we want. So we'll say hello. Okay. Uh, it's a forest, so I'm gonna go for Kiln Fate first. Because I think that we might be able to score an easy kill here. I think. Maybe. Oh, no, that's a swamp. Uh, okay then. Bang. Alright, play a Burning Prophet. And... Go for it, I suppose. Let's see what they have going for Oh, Cultivate! Can we win here? Uh, if we put Raking Claws on both of them... Can we win? Alright, math time. That would be a 7-2, or 7-2 for Double Strike, so that's 14. Yep, yep, we can just win here. Ta-da! Okay. Uh, it doesn't matter. I mean, game's over anyway. Doesn't matter. Hiya! Bang, bang! Bang, bang! Okay, so that happened. That was quick. It's quick and nimble when it needs to be. I don't know why the DK rap, which... Why, Jay? Okay, actually, what is my quest today? What is your quest? Black or green spells? We've really been showing those off, haven't we? Uh, we'll get there soon enough. Okay, so the next one is a combo deck that I have played in everything where it's possible. This is Bant Captain Crunch. I've played this thing in Vintage. I've played this thing in Prize, my own format that I made up. <laughs> All right. So here's the idea. You want to play uh, Captain Sisse. It's a legendary creature, four mana, tap, search your library for a legendary card, reveal that card, and put it into your hand and shuffle your library. No mana to tap it, just tap it. Easy enough. You also want to have Paradox Engine, which is a legendary artifact, so you can get it with Captain Sisse. Five mana, whenever you cast a spell, untap all non-land permanents you control. So that means Captain Sisse. So, Captain Sisse, Go get Paradox Engine. Ideally, cast another spell that turn, if you can, which is one reason why we run, like, Mox Amber, for instance. All right. But if you if you don't have it, Captain Sisse, go get Mox Amber, for instance, and then you can get the ball rolling. All right, so hopefully, while you're comboing off, you have uh, Lanor Elves, you have uh, Mindstone, Guardian Idol, maybe Emery, you have uh, Kinnon, Bonders Prodigy. You have stuff to give you extra... Oh, you have a Zhang Yanggu, I guess, and Rishkar. Ways to gain extra mana. All right. And, of course, the aforementioned Mox Amber. So Captain Sisse goes and gets something. You float all your mana, and then you spend that mana to cast whatever spell, if necessary, unless it's Mox Amber, to cast whatever spell you just got. Cool. Alright, so you untap everything because Paradox Engine is out. You go and do it again. Net mana every time you do it. Go get a Legion's Landing, a, a Reese, an Ovia, a Hope, a Shadow Spear. These are all very cheap. Thalia, <laughs> if you need to draw a card, and it, so on. Uh, everything else here, Kinnon, ideally, would be in here somewhere. That may be the first thing you go get. Okay, so then to what end? 
Well, you make enough mana that you can cast Ulamog, the Ceaseless Hunger. And yeah, because Watsi apparently thinks that my neat little format is fun, I suppose, or what for whatever reason, they put Captain Sis, a Paradox Engine Ulamog in here again, and I get to just... Oh, and you even have Micaeus as another win con. Uh, tap it to add a counter to it, untap. Tap it, distribute a counter, untap it. And you can do that every loop. Because this is Arena, I may not actually have enough time to do the full combo, and that is one potential weakness to this deck. But... And it, but it works! It works! You even have some backup win cons, like Uro, for instance, Uro. Uh, you have Kira to protect your stuff, Emery to go and get Paradox Engine if it gets countered or gets put in the yard for whatever reason. And it also gets back cards like Mindstone Guardian Idol. Uh, you have Inventor's Fair. If you need to, you can get out Black, uh, Black Blade Reforged and just make one creature huge over and over again. And uh, you, can, you can also just make a bunch of tokens or make huge tokens every turn. So you have a bunch of backup win conditions. But yeah, that's, that's how the deck is supposed to work. Uh, let's, uh, let's pretend that this is a thing and go for it. <sighs> can you tell I like the, the long hair? Should be in a L'Oreal commercial, right? So Sephiroth got revealed for Smash Ultimate recently as a DLC character in one of their fighter packs. It is canon that every time he showers, Sephiroth uses an entire bottle of shampoo. Did you need to know that? No, but uh, is your life better for it now? Also no, but <laughs> it's fine. We'll okay. keep. Okay. Let's make this work. Yes. We'll save the Mox Amber. Uh, yep. I have a sneaking suspicion they're not going to play anything in main two just because I did this. I hope I hope not anyway. Watch me be wrong. Ooh. Ooh. Uh, idle. Because you come in tap. Uh. Hmm. Oh, it's goblins. Oh, that's something I should play just for funsies. Just for funsies. Uh, okay. We're gonna be a little slow this game, I'm afraid. Uh, what do we do here? Another guardian idol, I suppose? Alright. There's still not much of a point in playing the Mox Amber. I'd like to use it so that I can untap with Paradox Engine immediately. Ooh. Also, in other formats, you can get Mox Opal instead. Uh, or as well. So the vintage version of the deck runs both, for instance. Oh, right on. No, no, it works, it works. It works. Don't laugh, it works, right? Okay, here goes. We have officially all of the mana, and I think we're ready to go off. Oh no, but we're not making colored. We're not making a color. No, no, we can still do it, even with only colorless mana. That's one of the joys to this deck. Even with only colorless mana, we can still make it work. We can still make it happen. All right, are you ready to get wrecked? Also, did I say hello earlier? I don't think I did. Alright, we better hurry. Paradox Engine. Oh, I'm doing it with the touchscreen. I need to be careful. Alright. Paradox Engine. What are you gonna do about it? Alright. Alright, here we go. Yes! Oh, they didn't even, they didn't even give me a chance! <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry you didn't get to see the, the silly little loop, but I'm so happy that that happened. I'm so happy. It's it's a deck I, I made. Also, it's called Captain Crunch, continuing the, uh, the history of magic combo decks being named after cereals, like 
Cheerios and Fruity Pebbles and Cocoa Pebbles and Oops All Spells and I guess if we want to count all breakfast stuff, there's cephalid breakfast and eggs and <laughs> all kinds of stupid stuff. With that out of my system, this is Jeskai Island Control. So I noticed that Mystic Sanctuary cares about a card simply being an island. Uh, th there's Obviously this is a cycle, there's one for each basic land type. Uh, and as long as you have three or more other islands, it gets to enter untapped and you get to put an instant or sorcery from your graveyard on top of your library. Uh, what are you doing here? I don't remember putting it... Maybe it happened automatically. Mountain and Plains should not be in here. Uh, so let's kill those real quick. And fix the mana base up. We can do that. With more islands. There we go. Okay, that's how it's supposed to look. Might be. So the only non-island in the deck then is Castle Vantress, just as a one of. Okay, so it's obviously very heavily blue-based. Our only one drops are Pillar Flame and the Cycling from Sensor. We have Deliberate, Depose Deploy, Warrant, Warden. Uh, we have Justice Strike, Petty Theft, but also Brace of Horror, Disallow, Absorb for Counter Magic. Our Planeswalkers are one Moo, one Narset. Should be two Narset, but this one actually cares about islands. Islands you control get the emblem uh, tap draw a card. So we're trying it out. One Teferi, one Narset of the Ancient Way, one other Teferi, big Teferi, even bigger. So. Uh, and then one route is a Viceroy, which, as I'm seeing this, should be a Narset instead. Even though this is a, this is a win condition. Five mana. Uh, there we go. There we go. Um, yeah, so two Narsets. Much better. The object of the game is basically just to stall and then win on Planeswalkers. That's it. That's it. All of your Planeswalkers except Narset can serve as a win condition. Well, I guess Teferi can't. This Teferi can't. Uh, but gives you a way to do it with everything else. So, Moo makes elementals and lets you draw a billion cards. Narset puts out an emblem that lets you deal damage to any target. Teferi lets your opponent not be able to win the game. And there we go. Uh, now, they, the non-basic islands have to also make... Uh, they have to also be islands. Now, thankfully for blue-white, that's possible more readily because we have Hallowed Fountain and Irrigated Farmland, as well as Raugen Triumph. Uh, but for red, we only have Steam Vents in Raugen Triome, because there's not a cycle lane for it. Which is why there aren't as many red cards in the deck. Uh, four Pillar of Flame, four Justice Strike, and the Narset, and that's it. Or, excuse me, two Justice Strike as our best removal. If we find another Obliterator, ha 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 You know, as you do, I suppose. Um, but yeah, that's, that's this silly deck. So let's switch it out. Ooh, hello. Oh, I made a change. That's right. Scooched it up. We're getting to sillier and sillier decks as it goes on, aren't we? This one's just themed around having a bunch of islands. Now, unfortunately, Tempest Shen cares about basic islands, which is why it's not in the list. Hi, Hawk. I see that, and immediately I think either the Hawk Ring from Dark Souls or Berserk, Band of the Hawk. Uh, sure. This looks fine. This looks very fine, doesn't it? Alright, let that come in tapped. Give him the hello. Okay. So we have Warden if we need to. Alternatively, we have Brazen Borrower. Okay. I like the sound of that. Uh, sure. Just pass it right along. We'll see what they play, but we're probably going to go for Narsa instead of uh, holding up Absorb. I believe that that might be right. It's a blue deck, and I would like to shut them... Oh, it might be a blue deck. Ooh. Um... Uh, hmm... Uh, sure. Let's let that one go. All the more reason to play a Narset out here. Bip. Blip. What are you going to do about it? If they can't remove it, then we'll get to... We'll prevent them from drawing the extra cards. And while she can't get lands, 
she's getting a lot of other stuff. Uh, Deliberate's probably better for what I have going on here. I really could use another land, for instance. Metamized Prophecy. Huh. It's not super effective, but it's not supposed to be either. <laughs> Watching a video on YouTube today about the, uh, the Mick Gordon's process of creating music for Doom, or Doom 2016 or Doom Eternal, one of the two. Oh! Um... I might come back to this deck, because that felt premature. We didn't really get to see the deck even try to do its thing too much. Um, we'll make sure we have enough time with everything else, and then we'll come back to it. Order of Midnight. Cool. All right, and then the next one is... <laughs> see, the same thing, but based on swamps instead. So <laughs> there are a bunch of swamps, and the main bonus that you get from this is Dread Presence. So here, just, you know, Zagoth Trium, because we needed to have another that made both black and blue. That is a, uh, a swamp. We have four Watery Graves and four Fetid Pools, the cycling one. We also have four Witches Cottage, and this deck thankfully has enough creatures to try to make that work. Six basic swamps, and again, the only non-swamp is a Castle Lockthwain. We have four Phyrexian Obliterator as a curve topper, along with Dread Presence. Whenever a swamp enters the battlefield under my control, Get to draw a card, lose one life, or drain two uh, to any target. So this ends up being okay, I would say. A Nighthawk Scavenger and Gifted Aetherborn are death touch lifelink creatures that'll hopefully help keep us alive against aggro. Heartless Act is removal. Thought Erasure is hand attack along with Thought Seize. Thought Seize and Thought Erasure. Love them. Together. Uh, four Negate. Uh, as the only mono blue card in the deck, at least in the main board. If I had a sideboard, I'm sure I'd have more. One cling to dust for graveyard hate that can also draw us a card. And then four blood chiefs thirst. Uh, now, not that many lands, 23, but the highest that we have in the deck is four CMC. Uh, we don't have card draw though, so other than cling to dust. So it, it may end up hurting us, but thankfully a lot of what we do, with, a lot of the rest of what goes on in the deck stalls. So I think we'll be able to make it. That's the hope, anyway. So let's switch you over to you. Over to you. And head into the next game. I've been streaming lately, and people will hear, because I haven't had a camera on, uh, people will hear me just... Like that. This is how that works. This is... I'm just stretching again. There we go. And it feels great. Alright, start off with the Zagath Trium to try to fake him out. As you do, I suppose. Hello. What is this? Oh, it's Reese! Nice. Okay. Well, we definitely want to play this before the cottage. So if we find another swamp, we might, just might, be able to make this work. Oh, I like what they're doing. I really like what the deck is trying to do. Oops. Oh well, it's fine. Target and opponent. Well, gee. I wonder. Alright. Did I hit- oh, I hit full control. That's right. Ooh. How many lands do they have? Not enough. Uh, we'll take Zerda. That's, that's the one. Yeah, keep it. Hang on to that. Okay. And there we go. Play a Swamp, then a Dread Presence, and hopefully we'll get there. Well, we could do Obliterator. I think Dread Presence is better because it has the chance to actually kill these two. Alright. Board the Weatherlight. Historic. I like what their deck is doing. I've tried to make this a deck before, and I should try it again. Oh, Vivian's Arc Bow. Top X, you may reveal a creature card, but put it on the battlefield. Oh, okay. I like that. I like that a lot. Alright, if I hit a swamp next, I'll play Dread Presence, play the swamp, and just kill both of them. At least that's the plan. And I know what's in their hand, so, uh, so 
a new card, right? Yeah, I am seeing a new card there, aren't I? Or is that the background? No, that is a new one. Okay. Uh, well, we didn't quite get there. Uh... Since they can only do one or the other, I guess I'll play... Cling to dust, targeting board, draw a card, see if we get somewhere. We can poke something down. Well, that's not a swamp. Uh, could play a Dread Presence here, but we don't need to. Let's go to combat. Could really use a swamp. Come on, deck. Alright. Let's do Obliterator. A little bit of a nombo there, taking a card out of their graveyard with Nighthawk Scavenger out. Yeah, but that's okay. That's okay. Do they still not find a land? Oh, you poor opponent. Ooh. Uh, okay, okay. They saw the writing on the wall there. I do wish that on Arena you had the ability to, you know, like on Magic Online you can draw cards after the game's over, see how it would have gone. I wish that I could have done that. Um, but alas, alas. Okay, so we'll we'll keep going for a bit. Show off. Uh, that is not all of them. Oh yeah, we're missing a few of these. <laughs> we we are indeed. So here's Gruel Land Destruction. Uh, interestingly, this does not have the usual suspects. Usually, you see me run cards like Demolish or Creeping Mold or <laughs> stupid stuff like that. Uh, but instead, we are running. Uh, here's our land destruction. We have four Cleansing Wildfire, which is land destruction, but it gives them a land back. We get to draw a card. When they don't have any basics anymore, it's great. Until then, it just keeps us even, but it works. There's uh, Field of Ruin and Ghost Quarter, and one Memorial to War. But as soon as you see Crucible of Worlds, you kind of know where this is going. So we can play lands from my graveyard, and... We also have Romanov Excavator. You can play lands from your graveyard. The object is to stick one of these and then to play cards that destroy lands over and over and over again. And just laugh at your opponent, I suppose. <laughs> I suppose. Uh, Crag Crown Pathway... Actually, I just... Tiny little optimization I'm going to make right here. I'm going to put in uh, Fable Passage. Take out the Pathways, probably. Put in Fable Passage. And I can use that to get all the lands out of my deck. That's that's almost certainly a better way to go about this, I, I believe. Uh, so take these out because we don't need a lot of turn. We don't have a lot of turn one plays we have to make. Uh, it'd be nice, but it'll it'll be all right. And that way we can also with excavator or crucible we can loop fable passage. So let's take at least some number of them out. Maybe keep one in. Probably not though. To be fair. Probably not. Also, it's a Gigantha deck, you may have noticed. Uh, there you are. One, two, three. Four? There we go, I suppose. So three Fable Passage, four Field, four Ghost Quarter, uh, four Sheltered Thicket, which is cycling, so it can go in our graveyard, and... Uh, oh yeah, also, Tectonic Reformation. There's three in the deck because if you happen to already have one and it's dead in your hand, you can still cycle it. But otherwise, each land card in your ha hand has cycling red. So later in the game, the lands don't actually end up being dead cards. Oh, and remember, you can play them out of the grave. So it ends up working out. You get to have your cake and eat it too. Also, here's a card that I used to have in the deck that I really... I, I'm trying to find a place for. It's Azusa, Lost But Seeking. And... I'm not sure. Maybe as one of the scavenging oozes? Maybe? Uh, Gilded Goose? Since we can fill our graveyard with l plenty of land, there's Elvish Reclaimer, which can also go and get Memorial of War, or to War. With Field of Ruin, we have to give our opponent, or Ghost Quarter, we have to give our opponent a land until they run out of basics at least. With Memorial to War, that does not happen. Eventually, you can get to the point in the game where you want to get Memorial of War out so that you have enough, if you have enough mana, you can just, ooh, what did I just do? 
Uh oh, what did I just do? What's happening? Did I, uh. What just happened? Arena? You okay? Do I need to close out? And then jump back in? I don't want to be too terribly impatient, but I do have a camera going. What just happened? Click! Alright, give me just a quick sec. Two, three. Uh, the very scientific method of counting to three and hoping that that's enough. It, it's not my internet. I'm, I'm checking my Wi-Fi right now and it looks like I'm still connected. So that shouldn't be it. That might be it. And it might just not have uh, updated for me yet. It says connected secured. So... What? can try to pull up my browser and see if anything shows up. Wait, it, it looks like it's doing something. It's loading initial scene. Alright. Uh, eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Let's go visit. Ah, okay, we're good. We're good. Alright. Worked. Nailed it. Alright. So back to here. Back to what we were up to. Um, land destruction. Got it. Uh, that means we have to make the change again really quickly. It won't take too terribly long. One, one, two, three. One, two, three, four. One. There we go. One. Uh, how many lands do I have? Twenty-four. You probably want to have a decent number of lands in a deck like this. So I think twenty-four is probably fine. Uh, I don't have any humans except Azusa. If I keep her in, if I have her in, so. Grum Gully just makes all my creatures bigger. Elvish Reclaimer is another win con. It's a 3-4 that goes and searches for extra lands as I need. Uh, one Gilded Goose for early game ramp, potentially, and it makes food tokens if I need them to stay alive. Um, other than that, Thundering Rebuke and Shock for removal, as well as Grim Lava Mancer to take advantage of our graveyard getting bigger. Uh, Excavator is a creature. Uh, Clothis has another win con. And we just go from there. So I, let's, let's find out where to fit Azusa in here. <clears throat> I didn't have a problem loading anything else up when I pulled my browser up, so I couldn't tell you, unfortunately, why it did that. Um, I will take out a Thundering Rebuke. It may not be right, maybe a uh, Scooze, but since I already have four Bone Crusher Giant and four Shocks, I think Thundering Rebuke is maybe the cut. But one Azusa Lost But Seeking to Azusa, Lost But Seeking, and we'll see if we can make this work. That's a decently high curve deck, so I better be careful, though. I mean, a decently high curve. For, for what I'm trying to do, it feels like it's high curve. Alright, so let's submit it, and we'll have two more decks to show off. And then we can try to play Jeskai Island again if we, if we feel like it. Just because that game felt like an early concession. I didn't really get a chance to show it. Hi, Mr. Pickle! <laughs> With that stupid grin on its face. He looks like a Mr. Pickle, doesn't he? Okay. Yeah, well, we can make this work. Oh. We can do Fabled Passage first, actually. I, I say we hold up both of our colors, though. Just in case. Just in case. Ooh, it's Waste Knot. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Okay, then. Uh, in that case, let's blow this up really quickly. Please. Of course. Of course. As you do, I suppose. Croxa. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Well then, uh, what would we like to throw away? I would like to keep scavenging is for obvious reasons. That is to say, what we're playing against. I don't know what small creatures we're going to come across, but if I'm wrong, we have a Bone Crusher Giant. Unfortunately, we let them draw a card, so maybe that wasn't right. Better than giving them a 2-2, I think. I think. Maybe. Alright, so let's get one out of the way now. Try to eat it. Okay. And obviously, we'll get a forest here. 
Hmm. Would you like to kill it? Okay. Why am I doing this now? That is a good question, to which I do not have the answer. Okay, ghost quarter. Cool. Uh, what's the other? Discard? Discard, discard. Let's do it again right away. Pretty quickly we're going to have to get rid of that. That's going to be a problem real soon. Eat Croxa. And what else? Play a Reclaimer. Yeah, that's a 3-4 after all. Not yet. No, it's, it's not yet. We only have two in the yard. We're getting there, but not, not there just yet. Alright, so they gain mana if I discard a land, eh? Uh, shh. And that, that'll put her to two? Yeah, two. Uh, shh. Sure, have all the land, have all the mana you need. Okay. At this point, we'll see how much that ends up helping them. Reaver. It is a death touch. What is it? Ooh, okay. Death touch, 4-3, deals combat damage, play... Okay, cool. I don't care. Oh, I do care. I don't have the ability to kill both of them. Uh-oh. Oh, no. Not this turn, anyway. I mean, actually, no, I do. So we'll use this to kill the Reaver. Get rid of her. Um, what's next? They have one creature in the yard. And I don't have any more forest, so I can't use Field of Ruin to get a forest. We could add Gigantha to hand. Um, I don't know. What's the right answer here? Do I just fit, get more red mana? Maybe. Maybe. Um... Wait. Yeah, we should do this now, shouldn't we? Okay. Force them to get a basic mountain here. Yep, there we go. Okay. I'm, I'm trying, folks. This, that may not have been correct, but this lets me play Bone Crusher Giant uh, ooh, uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh no, they have a steward, so they can sack a creature as well. So, what, sack discard? Yep, yep, sack discard. Fair enough. Uh, that's a good question. How many creatures? Uh, sack that one. We can try to make it work. I didn't have much of a choice in giving them that, though, unfortunately. Um, that's a lot going on there. I guess I might want to attack first. If I'm going, if I'm going to do this, I might want to attack first. Got to keep them off of six mana if possible. Uh, we can eat one, eat the reaver, I suppose, eat the steward, oh yeah, we have to actually go to damage now, that's important, I suppose, excavator, get back, uh, Fable Passage to get our last mountain out. Oh, I should have... Uh, that may not have been right. I maybe should have gotten a Ghost Quarter to hit their Dragon Skull Summit. Oh, they got it! They got it. Crap. Yep, yep, yep. They got it. They might have had it anyway. Wait, did they put a basic out? So yeah, they would have had it regardless, wouldn't they? 
Oh boy. Make me sack another creature, I imagine. Okay. Sack a creature. It, oddly enough, it has to be the scavenging ooze here, doesn't it? Because I need to use Romanov Excavator to get Ghost Quarter, I suppose? Alright, so we'll go Field of Ruin, destroy you. Alright, do you have it? I don't have one. Do you have one? That's what I want to know. Alright. Ghost Quarter. Fire. Do you have another? Ah, that's game. Good game. Yeah, okay. So it wouldn't have mattered regardless, in all likelihood. Uh, but yeah, we'll add that to hand. And... Yeah. Fire. And then pass. I kind of would like to give this deck another try, to be honest. We do some bonus games. Alright. You can make me discard. I will discard a land so they get, hopefully, some useless mana. And then, can you make me discard again? Well, even if they do, they can't use uh, Tiny Bones, but it doesn't matter. Rankle's going to kill me in the next turn. Another Waste Knot. Okay. Ooh! You are way too late. Cycling. They get to draw. That counts as discarding, folks. Ooh, again? Okay. Do what you have to do, I suppose. We are very dead here. Because I will die either to Tiny Bones or... Ooh, you're too late. You're way too late, man. Alright, well, we are, we're dead, but I guess I'll have some fun while I'm at it. Do you have it again? Do you have another one? Surely in the all-access event, you didn't put that many in your deck. Please? Please tell me? <laughs> Fine. Alright. What's another one to include? I suppose. That makes about as much sense as anything. Oh, I'll concede. Well, actually, I was dead there anyway. As soon as I, as soon as that resolved, I was dead. Okay, so that was a cool deck, at least. I, I like what was going on in it. Mm. Uh, we'll play another with that later on. That one I would definitely like to. So, Collected Elders, thanks to Wyatt Darby, who's apparently uh, uh, Daniel and Tellence's long-lost brother from Stardust Crusaders, uh, showed off this deck. I had an idea for something similar, but I think his was a little bit more uh, advanced. I think his was better than mine, by a bit. Uh, but this is still my my take on it. Uh, inspired by... I, I had an idea for the deck, his was better, and then I think I maybe made some improvement uh, improvements on the one that he had. So. Hushbringer and Takali Honor Guard both say creatures entering the battlefield don't cause abilities to trigger. And Hushbringer counts dying as well. Uro, Titan of Nature's Wrath, and Kroxa have this thing where if you prevent them from uh, having an ability when they enter the battlefield, they just straight up come in because they can't be sacrificed. The sacrifice bit is an ETB, as you can see in its first line. So what that means, and as I, I learned that firsthand from playing Hushbringer in uh, Oris, both in uh, Standard and Historic. So what that means is that you play one of these, and then you play Kroxa or Uro, you don't get the ability immediately. You don't get to draw a card, gain three life, get an extra land, or land drop. And you also don't get to make the opponent discard a card. But you pay two mana for a 6-6, six, six, or three mana for a 6-6, six, six, that has an attack ability, Seems okay. That seems alright. Other than that, you have Paradise Druid, because this is a five-color deck. Makes sense, I think. Uh, you have Lazav, interestingly enough, because it enters the battlefield survey of one, and it can become a copy at the cost of two or three mana of either one of them. So that's pretty cool. 
I, I have uh, Brazen Barrer as removal, his did not, or Tempo, I suppose. Bone Crusher Giant, his did, and I very much like that. It's also a collected company deck, because everything you saw there is 3 CMC or lower, so uh, <laughs> that'll be fun. <laughs> That's obviously pretty fun when it happens. Um, this is a static ability, and uh, this is a triggered ability. So if you find, a, say, Hushbringer Croxa, Hushbringer's ability will already be in effect by the time that Croxas could trigger, and therefore it won't. Now, I also included, here's a little optimization I had. Not really. It's just Fey of Wishes. You can get it off Coco. Uh, it's a 1-4 flyer, and it can stall for a little while, come back to hand. Uh, but what we also care about is that it gives you access to a wish board. And by the way, I should show off the land base. Lots of tri-lands, as well as Temple Garden is the most important shock land because it gives you white for your, you know, hate bears, I suppose. You're no soup for you, Nazis. Uh, and then we have, and it also gives you green for Paradise Druid and Uro. And then you can see the rest of these here. But we have a wish board. And admittedly, I just kind of went through and quickly picked a few. They have to be non-creatures, but other than that, they could be whatever. So, Blink of an Eye for bouncing and drawing a card. Eliminate for remover, removal. Elder Spell, Elder Spell. Elder Spell for Planeswalker removal. Inscriptions for their various functions. You know, take a pause 1080p if you need to see. Jace Cunning Castaway as a way to make my creatures have curiosity. Well, not curiosity, because it's draw discard. Uh, I can also make more creatures using this, and then, you know, later on in the game, I can make a bunch of Jace Cunning Castaways. That's always fun. Here's Inscription of Ruin, Maelstrom Pulse for removal of multiple targets, Inscription of Insight, there that is, neat. Uh, Mythos of Iluna, this lets me make a copy of target permanent, permanent, so it can even be lands, uh, but I, uh, it, it can make something that fights in this deck. Eat to Extinction for removal, that also lets me surveil. Could be the Vraska's Contempt instead for the two life. I think in a deck like this, getting a card in my yard is probably more substantial. Mythos of Vadrock, it's damage that I can divide up as I need to, and it can also make uh, permanents not attack or, <laughs> or block, and their activated abilities can't be activated, so it works. Mythos of Brokos, because it can put cards into my graveyard, maybe right where I want them, because of Lazav, and it can also get one back, you know. Uh, or, other way around, it can get two back, but it puts one in my graveyard. There we go, I knew what I meant to say. Liliana, because she mills you, stalls by making two twos, and her middle ability gets a creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield, and if you have one of your two drops out, your white two drops, then Uro just gets to stick around, so you get to work around the, the issue you normally have with that. And then I have two take control of target permanent, or target creature uh, spells. I have Lone Mage's Domination and Mass Manipulation, which is more expensive but lets me take creatures and planeswalkers and I can do multiples. Uh, yeah, so that's, that's what I have going on in this deck. Neat though it may be. Collected Elders for Collected Company and Crocs and Uro are both Elder Giants. Titans, uh, but you could also, I, I wanted to call it a senior home for the same reason, it's collected elders. Alright, so let's jump in. Bad joke is bad. Alright. Oh, I mean, it's naming a magic deck. Silly names are to be expected, I suppose. Yes, I will gladly keep this. This looks fun. We are not able to cast Croxa yet, though, unfortunately. So we have it, but we're not able to cast it yet. But, Brazen Barber gets to do its thing. Hopefully. Ooh, it's goblins! Ooh, Hushbringer is really good against goblins. Ooh, that's really good. Alright, we're gonna be a little slow here, but we have a uh, Brazen Barber as well, if we need. If we need. Okay! Now, this is not insurmountable for them. Gem Palm Incinerator will mess with me a bit. Wily Goblin. Dr. Wily. Yep. Slow down. Got four mana now. Okay, so we will put that in. Tapped. Just in case they have removal, maybe I should play another Hushbringer. Just in case. Uh, I could also hold up Brazen Barber, but I think this is better. 
I think. We'll gain some life while we're at it. And pass the turn. Can you, you, you can't remove both of them. That should be it. That should be okay. Uh, even if they have mugs, oh yeah, they wouldn't have a chance to do it just then. Okay. So now we can play Croxa or we can do Brazen Borrower. Ow. I think we'll live. <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah. If I do... Uh... Hmm. If I do Brazen Borrower to return it to hand, then even if they have Muxus, we're okay. But, if they have Muxus, I can just return it with Brazen Borrower. Uh, no, no, that's better. That's so much better, because in order to get Muxus next turn, they have to sack their creatures. Woo! Ta-da! And, Muxus doesn't get an ETB. Uh, so, yeah, this is actually a really solid... This is a really solid matchup right now. Ooh, the, the horn. Harold's horn. Harold! Right. Oh yeah, let me show it a bit more for, for what you see. So you don't have to pause. Take a look at it. That's pretty neat. Not a goblin for Snoop Dogg, though. Alright, Matron does not get an ability. Cool. Cool, dude. Alright. So, uh... hi ya. make them discard something. We're going to take a b decent bit of damage here on the swing back. We're actually going to take more damage on the swing back. Uh, but I think that we can make it work. Was that? Yeah, okay, it was a matron. Uh, you, you want to block, for sure. For sure, for shizzle. <laughs> I had to. Uh, we go to 21. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Yeah, okay then. Uh, sure. Wow, dang. Uh, okay. Let's blow them out. Give them the most useless one to keep in their hand. And no prospector. Makes sense to me. Okay. We'll hold up Fay of Wishes for later. Although we do have two. Eh, it's fine. We're we're way ahead. We're way ahead at this point. Alright. Now the Herald can potentially give them some sort of reach through their deck, but it's only at the beginning of their upkeep. Goblin. We are we get to be the goblin slayer. <laughs> <laughs> That's what's going on. We're Goblin Slayer now. Alright, I'm just gonna do this main phase. They have no cards in hand. I might as well. Uh, I mean, sure. Rar. I take three no matter what. Yeah, I should have gone with the 4-3, but it, it's okay. It's alright. Alright. And there we go. Uh, yep. Nope. Nope. I'll give them the good game. They, they, they saw it. So there's that deck. That is silly. That's also a really good matchup for it because we can shut off so many cards, including Muxus itself. Uh, so that's that's. Of meta decks, that's the one that we want to see. And then lastly, we have Collected Glass. Uh, Collected Glass is a, well, it's Glass of the Guild Pact, hence the name, and Collected Company, of course. So multicolored creatures you control get plus one, plus one. They're all multicolored. Uh, and then Collected Company, because they're all CMC three or less. Uh, the idea is you play cards like Reese the Redeemed, which also, coincidentally, makes tokens that are multicolored. So even if you can't get to its last ability, making two twos every turn, or three threes. Bronze Hide Lion, so three three for two, with two neat abilities. Imara is only a two two, but she makes tokens. Sadly, the tokens aren't multicolored, uh, but the tokens have lifelink. 
uh, Shauna, who gets bigger for each creature you control and can't be targeted by abilities. Uh, Iron Root Warlord, which makes tokens and gets bigger. See a thing here? Knight of Autumn for utility. Knight of the Reliquary to become a big one, and we have some lands to go with you in just a sec. And three Renegade Rallyers. Uh, because we don't have a whole lot of ways, unfortunately, to trigger Revolt in this deck. We do, just not a whole lot. We have Knight of the Reliquary, Fabled Passage, Field of Ruin, <laughs> uh, Blast Zone, and that's about it. Now, uh, the reason that we have these cards in a multicolor deck, that especially a deck without a lot of colorless, is because we have Knight of the Reliquary, so we're keeping utility cards in. This might be a little cute, but I think my reasoning sound. Uh, Blast Zone can destroy, usually CMC1 is what we care about, but it can destroy whatever we need. Uh, get, given enough lands. Crawling Barons gives us a creature that we can tutor up with Knight, and Field of Ruin gives me land destruction. So, everything we need, if not everything we want. Uh, yeah, and that's that's the deck. It kind of writes itself, I suppose. So let's switch over to it for for the last one. Hmm. I'm a little bit surprised that the decks tonight have worked as well as I thought they would. These are just ideas of mine. I'm not. I'm certainly not saying that any of these are going to win you a tournament. But they're they're cute. They're cool. Uh, none of these come in untapped, alas. But we'll make it work. Scatter Grove, Sun Petal Grove, Shauna, go from there. All right. Oh, goblins again. Gulbudin. We're not Goblin Slayer this time. This is not a matchup we'd like to see. We can make it work, maybe, but you may have noticed there isn't a lot of creature removal coming from us. Nor hate bears, because a lot of those are mono white. My back's in a weird position, so stretch for a sec. If I get too high, I go off camera like this. Oh, you can't see me. Okay. Ah. <sighs> Let me know when they when they decide to do something. Might just have a connection issue, or who knows. Ah, chieftain. Oh, okay. That's that's weird. Sh sure, Shauna first. Uh, cycling is an ability, so Jim Palm Incinerator won't be able to hit it. That said, we're in trouble. Uh, no blocks. No that. This is not looking too hot. Okay, well we got somewhere at least. Let's make a 4-3. And since we're not blocking with you... Oh, and, and we are. We are blocking with you. Because that'll actually... We'll trade two for two. Unless they have yet another... Oh, God. Okay, okay. We're going to try this one again. Th uh, this is going to be my first exception. We're trying this one again. That didn't feel like we had a chance to really show off what the deck's trying to do. Uh, so let's let's do that one another time. Maybe. Maybe. But just one more. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. When they get rid of the Skirk Prospector on turn two, that probably t oh hi Subasa. That probably should tell you some silliness like that is about to happen. Okay. Uh, get our color both our colors out early. This is a weird, weird little hand. We'll make it work. All right. So they enter the battlefield tapped. You say. Okay. Uh, still play Shauna. And yeah, there we go. All right, what silliness are we about to see here? And can we find a Knight of Autumn? So we can blow it up. Blow it all to smithereens. Ooh, I Soul Warden. You're cool, you're pretty cool. I'd like to say, I'd like to think. All right, come in tapped. And, hello? There we go, oh yeah. Delay. All right, gain a little bit of life. Let it through, 22. All right. Let's see. 
We have a blast zone, so if we need to, we can blow up our own Reese. We have another one in hand, after all. Uh, yeah, okay. Can't be targeted by a bill. Oh, yeah, okay, that works. That works. I kind of don't want to use it just yet, to be honest. Sure. Oh, what? You genius. Ah, uh, we'll, we'll use it now. I know, but it makes up for itself, at least. Okay. Skyclave Apparition, okay. Oh, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, took Reese, didn't you? Perfect, actually. I have a Bless Zone. Why are you taking re- uh, it doesn't matter. It's okay. They didn't see that. Bang. Okay. Uh, yep. We'll blow it all up. Oh, you- no, it's fine. It works. It works. Alright. Give him the- thanks! Alright, can we make this happen? No. But, can we try? Yes. But, no. Oh, hi, speaker. Okay. Ooh! Main fa- Ah, oh, crap. Well, there's Heliod. Okay. That's not good. That's not good. Even a Knight of Autumn wouldn't get rid of enough devotion at this point. Unfortunately. Hmm, okay. Well, we're, we're gonna try to make it work. Yeah. Pass it right along. That speaker's about to get obnoxious. Oh no, not another one. Oh no. Oh. Uh, so if that thing attacks, I have to drop Shauna and a token. Now thankfully I can get both of the- uh, nope, never mind, I have to use everybody. Yeah, I don't think it's happening this game. We don't have a lot of great come-from-behind mechanics, except maybe against artifacts and enchantments, but that's not what we're what we're looking at here. Woo! Give him the nice. That's a good play. That's a good play. Credit where credit's due, right? G. Whale! Whale! Uh... Good game. They, they have me next turn, unfortunately. I guess I could have played Shauna for the quest, couldn't I? Maybe. While I'm here, I suppose I can optimize a few more decks of mine. Oh, we just completed our quest, didn't we? Yeah, it was, what, black or green spells, I believe? Uh, but first, let's try land destruction one more time, because that was fun. I said I might do island control again. You kind of already know where that's going, and this is more fun, I suppose. It's more unique, for sure. And it looked like it could maybe have worked during the last time that we tried it out. Also, I'll open the pack or packs that I have in just a sec. Genuine beef. Okay. Oh dear. This this looks a little slow, but we can make it work. Alright. Since let's see if we can draw a land here, a colored land ideally. So we can inform ourselves a little bit about what to do with this fable passage. Oh! Well we didn't. Alright. Pass it right along. Wait, y'all. Probably go get green then. Yeah, we we should go get green. Because of uh excavator. Excavator can get Fable Passage back so we can then get red. Also, it doesn't look like this is a matchup for Shock, unfortunately. Hmm. Well, that's unfortunate. Uh. Okay. Pass. If we need to, we'll cycle the Reformation. We probably will, actually. 
Ooh, it's goblins again. Okay. Um, what you got? What do you have? That's a good card. That's a good card. That we will not get a chance to play for a bit. I can go Azusa and then play a couple lands. But even then, I'd need to find a mountain here, uh, or a stomping ground, in order to play. That's not one. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Okay. Um... I suppose... Field of Ruin, Azusa Lost But Seeking, Underrated Pokemon. Oh, I could have shocked there. I could have used Field of Ruin's ability and then shocked. Okay. Well, it's a land on top at least, so I didn't get punished too, too terribly hard. what do you have? Using this uh, Field of Ruin on Castle Embereth will be a beautiful fig. Jeez. Okay, now I know what I'm going to end up burning it on in just a second. No blocks. Cool. Yikes. On trikes. Hey, and we got a stomping ground too. Pay two life. One, two, three. Excavator. Play it. Sack it. Get that value. Get that value. You get that value. Play it. Sack it. Get that value. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, yep. And two at you. What's that? It's still an Embereth on top. So we can actually debate whether we want to use it there. Oh, yeah, you're... Yeah, I'm done. I'm done with that. Put a stop on your upkeep. <laughs> I mean, I'm not gonna block with her anyway, so I suppose... In turn, let them draw. Ooh, that's a Wily Goblin. Yeah, we're gonna fire it off. Fire it here. Alright. Yeah, that's fun. We can use Fable Passage one more time to get another forest out. Even if just once. Eh, uh, oh well. Well, they, they did get to dig a card through their deck. It's not ideal, but we can make it work. Maybe. Maybe. Alright. Do it again. In a second. Alright, there's the forest. Okay. They have enough mountains. Um. We want to just go big here, I guess. Still have to be a little bit careful, don't we? Maybe I should have tapped that differently. Uh, yeah, I should have. Turns out I should have. Oh, it's, it, it works. It, it works out. It's okay. Because we have Azusa, and we've only played one land this turn, haven't we? Alright, so let them go and get a mountain. It does shuffle the top of their deck. Alright. That is an unfortunate aspect of, of doing it this way. Um, and that should have been my last land drop. No, it's not! Ta-da! <laughs> okay, well, that was fun. How many do we have in our great? Look at this silly deck doing its thing, folks. Look at this. Isn't this just beautiful? 
And by beautiful, I mean obnoxious uh, attack. Alright. Watch them. Oh, no, they didn't. Okay. Well, fair enough, I suppose. Let's put a stop. In turn. I would not like for you to get that. They're, they're going to draw it anyway, actually. Um, because of that, we'll let them draw it, and it's just a land on top. Okay, actually, we're good. We're good with that, then. Alright, Warchief is fine. I would say. It's certainly not ideal, but we'll make it happen. We'll make it work. Oh, God. Well... Crap. Alright, that's game. That's going to be game, isn't it? Ah, uh, how are we going to beat that? Hmm. After all of that, we're still, we're gonna lose, like this. Uh. Well, this is one way to learn about our good friend exponential growth, kids. It's not impossible. We have a card that can get us out of this. And we actually have these two of them. It's Thundering Rebuke. Because Shock and uh, Bone Crusher Stomp will not get us there. That is a Crucible of Worlds. That is not what we need to see. Um, okay then. Whale. How? How? Freaking how? Um... Alright, so we can play a Romanop Excavator, and it'll be a 3-4. Hold us, hold us through there, buddy. Alright, yeah, we can't, we can't win this game. We cannot. Uh, if I, you know, something I should have considered is creatures with landfall. Alright, let's wait. Let them draw. It's another castle Embereth. Okay. Dear God. Because we don't, we don't need them to have that, too. Okay. Uh, okay, that was weird. They could have done Mindstone, actually, instead. Uh, cycle Mindstone. And if they had done that, I would have had to immediately fire off a Ghost Quarter so that they don't get Embereth. So I don't know why they did that, but they already played a land now, so now it doesn't matter. Um, although, we might still have to do it. Alright. Oh boy. Yep, you get a mountain. Cool. Oh crap. They get yet another goblin off the top. Oh crap. Well, I don't think I had a chance, a priority to do anything about it there. Although I could have done something about that one. Oh well, that's fine. We're, we're dead anyway, so I guess we're just kind of having fun at this point. We don't have Master Mover. So, yeah, we're dead. Whee! Are they going to attack this turn? Hmm. Um, okay, okay, well, you block here, you block here, and you, and you, and e is everyone else accounted for, other than the tokens? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we're still dead, obviously. This is 8 plus 1 that got through, so we're still dead. But, you know, we're having fun. <laughs> we're having fun. Ah, and they got us. They got us. <sighs> I 
who needs Muxus, right? I still think that that deck I played is really fun. Even though it didn't win for us, it's still really cool. Alright. Is there anything else that I can think of? Uh... Nah. Nah. Uh, I think we all know how this deck goes. I kind of want to play this one more time, though. We'll play Transmogrify Tokens one more time. Because that this deck is fine. Cavalcade. Transmogrify... Transmogrify of Calamity? Cavalcade of Transmogrific... Whatever. It doesn't work. Let's just admit it doesn't work. Okay. Hi again, Dr. H. Who knows what I'm playing? I could be playing anything. But I'm playing this. We'll go Satyr's Cunning Forgotten Cave. Because I don't think we're getting a... Oh, we did get a mountain. Okay. I mean, fair enough. Oh, if I play Forgotten Cave here, I can get Chandra next turn. No, it's okay. We'll go for you, and you, and that'll give us Cavalcade for four damage next turn. Although, we'll see if it works out. Maybe, maybe not. Okay, no, it works out. Alright, swing, and that went too quickly. They don't have any instant speeds at one or two mana. Okay. Oh, hi, it's goblins again. Why? Why are you playing goblins? Why aren't you playing some silly brew, like me? No, it's fine. It, it works. It's what they want to do. Uh, we'll play Chandra here. Hit them for four? We can go for a little bit more if we really feel like it. Uh, but I'm gonna wait, actually. So they'll block one, obviously. Go to 13. Next turn, I can play Cavalcade, attack with everything, and then get 12 damage worth of triggers in. Alright, what do you have? That's not quite enough for Muxus just yet. If you don't have any other pumps, we're just going to let this hit Chandra. Ah, oh, you stop that right now. Why? I'll be honest, playing goblins did not cross my mind when I was thinking of what deck I would play for this. I guess I can see the appeal of doing it. It's powerful, and it involves a lot of rares that a lot of people can't play unless they're in an event like this. So actually, yeah, that's fine. I use it as a way to brew, but I guess for other people, not so much. That's fair. That's fair. You play what, play what makes you happy, right? Yeah. Well, they can't block. That's right. That's right. Cowards can't block. As we all know. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Well, how many do I have in the yard? Just those, so I'd have to give up one of my satyr's cunnings, right? Which is fine, I, I can do that. Alright, force them to keep some number back. Because I have lethal if they just swing out. Ah, uh, Oh, holy crap. We're dead, we're dead, we're dead. That didn't quite work. Okay. <laughs> they can't block. <laughs> Cowards and satyrs can't block, for whatever reason. Okay. Is there anything else just at the just as a last minute thing that I want to try to brew up before the event ends? Anything else I can think of? Should, could I optimize one of these other decks that I have? I'm sure I could. <laughs> um, Obliterator Rock. Soul Soldiers. Uh, this, oh, that's what this... That, I mentioned I had an idea for this deck sooner. 
Um, this is not it because it's missing white. But still, that's. I've been thinking about this for a while. Uh, I could go way back to some old school stuff. This was my first deck on here from episode one. Popper Rat Colony la la la. <laughs> you could build anything you'd like. So I go and build Rat Colony now. Um. Well, let's see. Anything else I can think of? I have an idea. Just really quickly, we'll get to see me brew something live. Alright. So, here's how we do it. Rare, or Mythic Rare, from... It's a weird set. Jumpstart. It's not even really a set. It's just a bunch of weird stuff. Um, let's see if I find something that jumps out at me. So I just, I'll just brew it live. Uh ramp into something weird like that, I guess? Yeah, we could do like a Micaeus Cathars Crusade. Could make something like that work, a Selesnia. Yeah, okay, okay, I got an idea. I have an idea. Let's do Selesnia Hate Bears. Let's do that. Okay. So, uh... Selesnia and Taxes. Cool. Let's start off with... Getting rid of <laughs> of what we just put up. Uh, although we will still sort it by rares. Uh, white, Thalia. I'm going to forget some of them, so we'll take off rare just in case. Uh, Skyclave, that should be enough. Alright. Lanawar. Lanawa. Wah. One, two, three, four. Gilded Goose. That's enough. Not a whole lot of green in here. Night. Autumn. Night of Autumn. Oh, yeah, I have to give another letter. That's right. Alright. Let's see. What other hate pieces do we need? Uh, Avon Mind Sensor. Because Avon Mind Sensor on turn two is broken. Um. Even though it's a Thalia deck, we're going to run Collected Company. Let's see. Can't run... Con well, we can, but we're not going to run Containment Priest as a result. Uh, let's slow them down. What's the name of that bird? Uh, we'll say... Tapped Non-Basic. Yeah, that, that should be enough. Yep, Archon of Emeria. And then... Could run Knight of the Reliquary for just another big creature, uh, for a big creature, and we can make this Maverick. I guess Th that's what this is. It's Maverick. Ooh, collected Maverick. Uh, wouldn't even be a bad idea, to be honest. Knight of the Reliquary. Not as many hate bears as I probably should run, but at least all of these are pretty strong. I think that's safe to say. So then we'll check out our land base and make it nifty. Uh, we'll say, we'll start off with the duels and then we'll work on the night package. Oh, genius. There's a lot of temples. Temple garden. Actually, here, here's a faster way of doing it. There we go. Okay. One, two, three, four. One, some number of those. One, two, three, four. But they come in tap, so I want to be a little bit careful about them. Uh, Fabled Passage, because it fills the graveyard, I suppose. That makes sense. Alright. And skip ahead. While we're here, we'll pick out a Blast Zone. And a Field of Ruin in just a bit. Fabled Passage, one, two, three, four. It's probably good. Field of Ruin, although I like the art more in this. I tend to go for the more original card, the one that's earlier in its, in its time. Uh, switch these around. Bob Ross, nice. That's that's what we want. Uh, we could also get another creature. We could put out Crawling Barons, I suppose. So we'll take out a Plains and put in... Was it Crawling Barons? Good. Uh, that should be it. There are other cards we could include, but I think this is fine. Alternatively, we could have done Mobilizing. Oh, Mobilize District. Maybe that's even better, but... Just want to look through the rest of these just to make sure. Graveyard hate, if we want to put this in here for graveyard removal. Uh, no, I say that's okay. So, 
Maverick. Here's a nice little Maverick deck thrown together. Didn't take too terribly long. Uh, weaknesses. We don't have any card draw. We have Collecty Company, and Thalia doesn't like Collecty Company too much. Uh, but because we're running both colors, we get to run the best hate bears for those colors. At least off the top of my head. Removal, kind of removal, big guns, uh, interaction, 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 ramp so that we can play all of these as soon as turn two, this turn three, or even even turn four uh, through Thalia, hopefully. And that should be everything. 24 lands is, I think, too many, actually. So we can cut one if we feel like we need to. But I'm going to try it this way. Scattered Grows probably would be the easiest one to cut, but at least if it's in our hand we can cycle it, so that, that's fine, we'll hang on to it. We'll try it at 24 lands. It's a bit much, uh, especially since our curve tops at 4, but let's try it. Alright, last go. This will be the last one. Hey, why not? And I still have... What is that? Most of the coffee's still left. Huh. Just enjoying this event while it lasts. Uh, yep. It's everything we need. If not, well, pretty close to everything we want, actually. All right, so that's scattered grows. That's the cycle one. Crap. Okay, so we will play a temple garden, gilded goose. Goose is loose, and hold up Avon mind sensor, I suppose. Uh, well, we'll see what they play. Yeah, we're gonna hold up mind sensor. Nope, Fatal Push. It's dead, Jim. Okay. In that case, I guess we'll go Fable Passage. Do Scattered Groves. Yeah, we'll do Scattered Groves. Even though it means we can't cycle. I know, I know. Once again, I don't think Mind Sensor is going, oh, going to get a chance to shine. If they take the Mind Sensor, it means they had to worry about it. Otherwise... Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, okay, fair enough. Uh, we'll say green. And pass. So it's pretty obvious what I'm about to do here. Though theoretically I could sack the food token. I don't think that's what we're after. <laughs> Who knows, I might get another Gilded Goose later on. Might need the life. Dragon's Horde. Enters the battlefield in your control, put a gold counter on it, remove a gold counter, draw a card. Okay, so they're just gonna draw a card here for it, for the trouble. Uh, no you don't. No you don't. Leave it as bait. Yeah, okay, okay. They did it. Okay. Bibbidi bop. Alright, and grab a planes. This takes two. Hmm. Alright, so no more gold counters. Can't be scared. Alright, last turn. While I have mana open, I might crack it here. Do it, do it! Alright, let's see if they get lucky. Nice. Alright, they still got there. Alright, we are actually going to activate it while we're at it. Alright, see what they have. Alright, there's a knight. A Knigget. Monty Python. Alright, so we don't have lethal just yet. Ooh. Ooh. Uh, well, I would have liked to have those in the opposite order, though I guess it wouldn't have... Ah, That's a good game. That's a good game. How long have we been going? Uh, two hours? Over two hours? Kinda doesn't feel like it, to be honest. Especially given that I've had so little coffee, good grief. That's not, that's not like me. That's not like me at all.
seven. I've gotten seven wins. Okay, I like this deck. When I said last one, I mean last deck, not last game. We're gonna do one more game. Okay, and then that'll be it. This is a two-hour uh, extravagant. Hi, again. Hi, Doctor H. Oh, oh, I see. A well, no, we have Gilded Goose. We'll try it out. We'll see if we can make this work. All right, so we get one shot at this. Ooh. I know what this is, and unfortunately, I have a sneaking suspicion that we're not going to get much out of Thalia or Aiden Mind Sensor. Yes. Okay. Now, what we'll ha in order to make a uh, white man again, unless we find a land off the top, we're going to have to make a food token. Yet yeah, it's goblins. All right. All right. It will maybe eventually ma- oh, geez, nice. Nice! We take those, I suppose. We take those, I suppose. Um, okay. Well, there are actually searchers. So maybe hit them for a bit. Right, and we'll hold up our mind sensor. Alternatively, we could use the Knight of Autumn here to eat their treasure token. might be worth it. Yeah. It guarantees that they won't have Crank Up next. Alright. But it's only a 2-1. Uh, okay, well, maybe we stalled for a tiny bit of time. Maybe. Um, okay. I know it's going to get eaten, but it's going to get eaten anyway. So let's make them make the trade. Alright, that means it's probably not a Cranko hand. Because if it were a Cranko hand, they might want to keep another goblin around. It wouldn't be worth it. Alright, and pass. Alright, Matron. Play Goblin Matron. That's what this Aven Mind Sensor is here for. That's what we want to see. Play us a Goblin Matron, will ya? Oh, that's not a Matron. I guess that's okay. It's weird, at least. We can live with this. No blocks. Because we'll have a first strike creature out next turn. Okay. Another, yet another land. Uh, we, we definitely have to play the Thalia here. Don't know why we did it in that order, but we did. Okay. Um, what are our two drops? Just Thalia? Jeez, Jay. Jeez. Really made it happen there. Okay. Uh, attack with you, and you. Um, well, there aren't that many one-drops from them. We'll see what they do at end of, uh, during their turn. I may put Blast Zone up to two, even though it'll kill my own Thalia. I might, not saying I will. Probably not right. All right. And Castle Ember thankfully only improves power, not toughness, so the first strike from Thalia will still be lethal. S thankfully. Alright, Herald's Horn for four mana. Four mana Herald's Horn. That seems okay. Uh, pass to attackers. They're probably not going to do it. They better not do anything. Alright. Alternatively, we can make a food token with Goose. Alright, add one. Okay, okay then. 
Do I have to tap you to make a food token? I do not. Okay, that's nice. That's nice. Alright, do this number again, this song and dance. Just swing with those. We can poke them to death. And pass turn. Alright. Let it do its thing. Is it a goblin? It is a goblin. Okay. Play it. I dare you. I dare you. Okay. It's double Cranko. That, which means it's Cranko. Okay. Well. Uh. If they fire off the Cranko, I can pop the blast. Oh no, they're, they're doing it now. Okay. No, they have no more two drops. Do they? No more two drops. Hmm. Well played. And now they have another Wily Goblin. Activate Krenko. You know you want to. Okay. If I fire off Blast Zone here, I kill my own Thalia. Uh, but I keep them from getting another 2-2. So it, it's... It's all even, I suppose. Actually, it, it kills a Wily Goblin as well. So... Let's do it, question mark? Alright, blows up Thalia, Wily Goblin, and it gets rid of one of the uh, tutus that they would have had. Okay. I don't feel too great about this game, unfortunately. I don't think we're making it. So, the goose is going to get run under the bus. Alright, let's make a food. Oh, you, you do have to tap it. I missed that. Ah. Okay. It thankfully didn't matter, but wow. Okay, um... We are dead. Even if we take out the Cranko here, they still have way more than enough damage to do us in. But I'll pretend I have a chance. Because, why not, I suppose. Uh, yep, four less, so I couldn't hit Muxus anyway, unfortunately. I could have hit Chieftain, but then they would make enough tokens to more than make up for it. If I keep everything back here... Uh, Goose... Two, three... Two, one... Two, two... Uh, eat the food... I can live for another turn, but that doesn't a win make. And also, no, I couldn't live for another turn, could I? No, never mind. Alright then, well... Yeah. Good game. Good game. Go to five, block two creatures, and then take the rest. Ah, ah, we'll save them the trouble. Save them the time. Okay, well... You don't want to come across a terribly creature-heavy deck with Maver Maverick either. Because uh, we play a lot of cards like Thalia that hate more on the non-creature decks. Which is not Magic's direction. Uh, it hasn't been for some time. Okay, now that's the last one. Thank you all for your patience. Here's your reward. <laughs> Two hours in. Another Inscription of Insight. Sure. Sure, why not? Normally I, I do the shrug like this, but my hands are cut off, aren't they? So I have to do it like this instead. <laughs> okay. Uh, I guess we got a new card that 
doesn't know. Well, it is a rogue. Like, I guess we want to do Brawl Rogues, where we need all the rogues, including the less optimal ones. I guess we can play that. Uh, yeah. Got some more rares. Sweet. Alright. I guess that's going to be it for now, then. Uh, take care, Magic Community, and I guess that I will... S I've moved into the next day for my, for my wins. I guess I'll see you all later. Bye-bye.